Sports, home of the Olympic Games, Notre Dame football, the Premier League, the NASCAR playoffs, Sunday Night Football, and Super Bowl 56, only on NBC. Let's go! We are putting everybody in our house! Ah, yes, sir! Leave them on you live for, baby. <laughs> Waiting all day for Sunday night, let's get it. You thought nothing could surprise you. You thought you'd seen everything. But you never saw me coming. All eyes on me, ready and now. The Titans go to the King Cat! Burrow deep to you, Zamba. Keeping the play alive. I'm rolling with Chris. Ready or not, you can't escape. I-N-D-Y. Touchdown. You can't stop what I got. Ready or not. San Francisco. Big time plays, guys. Ready or not. Oh, the beautiful Bay Area. Yeah, that is the beautiful Bay Area. A little bit of a different night. We got football beautiful. in the elements. It is it's beautiful. usually beautiful, Tony, but <laughs> Al Roker and Dylan Dreyer confirmed. We've got a bomb cyclone hitting the Pacific Coast, please. Heavy rain in the Bay Area tonight. It means wet and windy at Levi's. Fans still there, though, for the 49ers and the Colts. San Francisco, they have dropped three in a row, but Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo, back. He missed the last game with a calf injury. He used the bye week to heal up. On the other side, Carson Wentz, always talking about him healing. He's back, and he's turned it around. Two of the last three, they're in the AFC South race before they need it tonight. Both teams do. San Francisco, Indianapolis coming up for you in the rain on Sunday Night Football. Before Al, Chris, and Michelle, we always begin right here with Football Night in America. Welcome. Mike Tirico back with Tony Dungy. Drew Brees, rest of the team coming up here momentarily. So we started talking about this as we all gathered about six, seven hours ago to watch the early games. Bad weather games. You all played in so many. Give me one or two that was like the worst of the worst. Yeah, probably 2013 divisional playoff round at Seattle. I remember going out for pregame warm-ups. Two hours before the game, the sky is black. It's noon, and the sky is black. Ice, hail, sleet. You look this, looks like, this looks like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Not great conditions for a quarterback. You don't know where the wind is blowing from. In fact, it was, it was so cold that we ended up wearing triathlete wetsuits and just cut the sleeves off so it kept kept the organs warm but the uh, extremities were you know frozen <laughs> for me drew it was the 1978 afc championship game you weren't even born yet i'm still cold from that game it was cold freezing rain yeah. you couldn't fall down the it was so wet and watery and just cold earl campbell and the houston oilers they were out in warm-ups with big jackets on. We knew we were going to win that game. The game was over. The but it was, oh, man, it was a mess. No, it was not the Astrodome. <laughs> State it was Pittsburgh in January. I remember watching that game. So we're going to have those weather shots in this game. But all jokes aside, this is a really important game for both of these teams in good divisions with teams that have separated a little bit, including today. So what's the urgency here, Tony? Well, you hate to talk must-win game this early in the season, but if I were coaching either one of these teams, yes, this is a game we have to win if we want to win our division. And the bad weather, I really think it could help the 49ers get back to the roots. If they feel like they have to run the ball, that's what they do best, and I, I'd love to see that tonight. Yeah, and they've lost three in a row, but, but the Colts now, you feel like they found a little rhythm. They're running the ball well with Jonathan Taylor. I feel like Carson Wentz has gained some confidence as well, making some plays in the pass game, and we'll see what that looks like today with the weather. But bottom line is they just have confidence. they got momentum. Defense is playing better as well, and they know how important a game this is for them to get back in their divisional hunt. They play at Tennessee next week. I will give you a peek at how bad the weather is and what's Rodney doing with his umbrella. It was a football night. <laughs> staple here in a couple of minutes. Before we do that, uh, to the early games, say, look, the slate wasn't great. The games weren't competitive, but I think a couple of huge storylines came out of today. Give me one. Yes, I don't know who the best team in the AFC is, but I can tell you who it's not, the Kansas City Chiefs. They are just playing bad football right now, undisciplined. They're playing with lack of fundamentals, penalties, mistakes, poor pass protection, turnovers. This is what we've seen four or five weeks in a row. It's not good football. How about the Cincinnati Bengals? They go into Baltimore today, unfazed, 
41 points they hang up on this defense. A bunch of them through the air. They had 10 explosive plays. Joe Burrow, calm, cool, collected. Made a ton of plays versus the Blitz today. And by the way, Jamar Chase is still lighting it up. Is he okay? Yeah, 200 <laughs> yards receiving today. They, uh, they, uh, they, they really impressed today in a game where, you know, listen, they've gone on the road and won at Pittsburgh. They've mm -hmm. gone on the road and won at, at Baltimore. Yeah. Both tough places in the division that you, you never would have thought they'd be going into and winning the way they have. Eye openers. And those guys have had some great throws and catches the last few weeks. They're always the best throws of the day. We throw it over to Maria Taylor and Chris Sims. All right. Appreciate it. And I, I'm really proud of Chris Sims this week because for once, he's taken the spotlight off of the quarterback position, which he used to play, and sharing it a little bit with the best throws this week. A little bit. Forget the QBs. They always get all the glory, all right? We got a little trickeration this week. There was a lot of trick plays at the 1 o'clock hour. New England Patriots, the king of trick plays. Kendrick Bourne, double pass. He goes down the field to Nelson Aguilar. Easy touchdown. Hey, Joe Judge, ex-New England assistant. Oh, Dante Pettis, Daniel Jones. Big completion. Great catch by him with one hand. And then Mike Vrabel, old player from New England. What a play. The old okie doke by Derrick Henry. Great play there. Those were the throws of the day. It's got to get some love. Got to spread it around a little bit. I Maria. love that because Thank I'm you. sure that everyone in America had Derrick Henry throwing more touchdown passes than Patrick Mahomes. So at least you put some spotlight on the running back. Uh, meanwhile, as we already heard Mike just mention, the bomb cyclone is right over Levi Stadium. I don't really know what that is, but it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It's a bad storm. Yeah, anytime <laughs> soon. Um, but the weather has followed these guys from coast to coast. Jack Collinsworth and Rodney Harrison. And is he holding his umbrella, Jack? What's going on? Let's hope so. <laughs> Maria Chris, I don't know what a bomb cyclone is, but I know anytime they break out the peacock jackets, we're in for some serious waterworks. Right? Stop it, Maria. Stop. Leave me alone. These conditions right here, though, it always sets up for some defensive football. We start every week looking for the best defense around the country. Who took that crown today? I got to go with the Tennessee Titans. I'm so proud of my old um, teammate, Mike Vrabel. Tennessee was absolutely outstanding. Constant pressure on Mahomes. They knocked him out. It seemed like Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes was confused. They did a great job on Tyreek Hill, not giving up the big plays, but nine quarterback hits, three forced fumbles, an interception. They were all over the place. Listen to this crowd, man. You think they care about this weather? the Bills and the Chiefs in less than a week's time. So who is the class of the AFC right I still, now? I still love Buffalo. Yes. I still love Buffalo. But you got to respect the Cincinnati Bengals. And when I look offensively, Jamar Chase, he looks like he's the best wide receiver in the National Football League. And I think they, and I know they have an underrated defense. I like Cincinnati. They knock off the Steelers in Pittsburgh, the Ravens in Baltimore. Those Bengals are very real. In Northern California, the ground crew told us they had to go find the tarp. There's wind, there's rain, it's football weather for the Colts and the Niners on Sunday night. My name is Darius Leonard and my cause is Maniac Foundation. You know, we're definitely just trying to work on, you know, helping helping families in need with food, uh, making sure, you know, kids uh, stay up to date with their fitness. And then, you know, we're trying to hit the education level as well, make sure they understand that, you know, football or whatever sport that you want to do in life, you know, they're going to always come to an end. But, you know, that, that education that you have is something special. I want to be a professional athlete. Where are you at? Just trying to find my way to, you know, give back as, as many ways as possible and just kind of make sure that, you know, to find the next, you know, Derek Slinner, you know, find the next guy, you know, be the next president of the United States. Well, I'm here for you. That's a great visit with Darius Leonard. You can check out the full conversation with Rodney on NBCSports.com. The $100 million linebacker. He's been leading this Colts defense since his second round arrival back in 2018. Rod, you talked with Leonard this week. What you learn about the Colts defense? Yeah, he told me that this defense could be really good, but they have to play a lot more consistent, and they have to stop with so many mental breakdowns, whether that's up front in the run game or in the back with the secondary, but they also have to do a better job in the red zone. And Leonard's been the takeaway king ever since he came into the league. Top five in those four takeaways. Nine interceptions. That means all linebackers since he arrived in the NFL. He's pretty darn good at yeah, that. Yeah, he, he's always everywhere. Wherever the ball is, he's there. And he told me, he says, every snap is an opportunity to 
concept for a takeaway. And this is a really good job by him. Just sitting back, being patient, reading the quarterback. And, it, and he's got phenomenal hands. If it hits his hands, he's not going to drop it. But also in the run game, and he does this. He wants to force the ball out. He does that Tillman punch, right? Trying to force the ball. He's not even thinking about a tackle. He wants to create separation and force turnovers. That's that Mike Tyson punch right there. Yeah, he's that a, was. Got the long ball. Uh-huh. So with their first and second round picks back in 2018, the Colts took Quentin Nelson and Darius Leonard, two of the best at their positions. Mike, back over to you. All right, Jack, let's talk about somebody who Leonard will be seeing in all likelihood at some point tonight on the San Francisco offensive side. Debo Samuel, third year out of South Carolina, does a lot. You've got a category for a guy like Debo Samuel. It's great to have in an offense a joker. <laughs> you call him the Joker. Whenever you need a play, what do you do? You pull out the Joker. This is a guy that can do everything. Obviously, he's listed as a receiver, but he is the guy who's catching all the balls across the middle, those tough catches, making, making plays when guys are hitting them, and third down, big part of the third down package. Here he is. Hey, let's just send him out in motion, throw him a bubble pass. Basically, he becomes a punt returner now. He's got blockers out front, and you know he's going to break tackles and push guys in the end zone. Here, let's just line him up at running back. Pitch him a toss sweep, pull him the tackle around again stiff arm breaking tackles finding his way to the end zone this is a guy that can do a little bit of everything and expect them to line him up in a lot of different places tonight yeah he will be lined up a lot of different places i promise you darius leonard will know where he's lined up and they may even have some special checks when he's in the slot or in the backfield it's the kind of day with the weather too that he could be a big factor yes. in a lot of what san francisco does we'll watch for samuel tonight against indianapolis second here for us to share uh, some news with you it's a sad day for all of us at NBC Sports, as we learned this weekend that a longtime member of our family passed away. Bob Newmeyer was a fixture for decades on the New England sports scene. Newmy was also a reporter in the early days of this program. He covered track and field at the Olympics for us. But the Syracuse alum was truly in his element as a staple of our Triple Crown and horse racing coverage. Quick with a pick and a quip, Bob brought all of us so many laughs. He passed away peacefully at home with his wife, Michelle, by his side. We'll all miss Numi, Bob Newmeyer, who was 70 years old. Our Premier League team was at the iconic Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum this weekend for their first fan fest in nearly two years. Thousands of soccer supporters from around the country came to join the party, which included plenty of special guests, giveaways, and some great games as well. It was an awesome weekend out in Southern California. I'm sad we weren't invited to the party, but we are invited to do these highlights, Chris Sims. Let's start with the Falcons taking on the Dolphins. Tua Tonga Vailoa and Miami looking to snap a five-game losing streak. Fourth quarter, Atlanta's up 27-21. The defense has to step up to slow down. That's right. Miami's defense didn't play well, but this was a big play right here. Matt Ryan loses loses who's in pursuit of him. Strip sack fumble. Miami's got the ball. Yep, they get the ball back with under six minutes. Ensuing drive. Tua Tunga by Loa finding Matt Collins for the four yard touch. Great play, great throw. Miami offense was really impressive. Tua had a very good day other than two costly interceptions. Two minutes to go. It's National Tight Ends Day. Hey, and Kyle Pitts 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 Pitts. Good. Well, this guy might be the national tight end forever and ever. I mean, he is a freak of nature. He's such a big guy and runs like a wide receiver. Well, that catch was huge. With three seconds left, it sets up the field goal that would be the game winner. Young Wei Koo from 36 yards. And Atlanta has won three of their last four. And now six straight loss for Miami fans. A little bit of shame, apparently, in Hard Rock Stadium. Meanwhile, the Jets taking on the New England Patriots for the second time this season. Uh, we start with the first quarter, no score. Trick play for the Patriots. Yeah, we saw this. The, the Patriots have been the masters of the trick play, really, in the Bill Belichick, Bill, Bill Belichick era, excuse me. But great play and call there by Josh McDaniels, offensive coordinator. Kendrick Bourne went to Nelson Aguilar as a 25-yard touchdown, second quarter. Zach Wilson on this play. You're going to see him get hit on his blind side by Matthew Junon. And on the replay, take a look here. He ends up leaving with a knee injury. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't, you know, going smoothly to this point, but it looks like Judon falls on that right knee, and certainly Zach Wilson was in a lot of pain. It's been reported as a PCL injury, and ultimately, we know that Wilson will be undergoing an MRI. Hey, it is national tight end. Tight end. What was that, George Hunter Kittle? Hunter Henry. Okay. 
touchdown. <laughs> Another touchdown for the tight end. Jones looked great today. <laughs> Offense looked really good. And the Patriots win it 54 to 13. Okay, it's the second time that we've seen this matchup. What was your biggest takeaway? I, I think it's the, the New England Patriots offense. They got something going. We knew the defense was good, but it's the second week in a row we've seen the run game be successful, and we've seen Mac Jones and company make some big plays in the pass game. That, that continued today against the New York Jets. Clearly their best offensive performance of the year so far. Absolutely yeah. put up 551 total yards, and that is their best outing so far mm. this season. Let's get it back to Mike. All right, Maria, let's flip it over to the game you showed before that, the Atlanta victory over Miami. It Atlanta's won three of the last four. That's the good news. The reality is it's the Jets and the Giants and Miami who they've beaten. So I, I don't know what to read. But we saw them in the preseason. Are you liking what you're seeing from the Falcons now? I do. I, I felt they, like they were really lacking a lot when we saw them in the preseason. And I, I think I've been really impressed with the way that they've incorporated Cordero Patterson into the offense and Kyle Pitts. I think mm -hmm. you, only, you figured it was a matter, only a matter of time before he really started to catch his stride. But 16 catches, 300 yards over the last two weeks. And of course on National Tight End Day, we got to talk about a guy <laughs> like that. He's He's catching fades on corners. He's 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 uh, you know getting a bunch of great matchups all over the field, and, and obviously he's developing a great rapport with with Matt Ryan. And I'm going to go to the other team, Miami. I really thought they were going to be a playoff contender, and obviously they're not. Everybody's saying, "Hey, what's wrong with Tua and everything?" But it, that defense is what worries me. They, they should be carrying the team, and they're really struggling on defense right now. A little bit more on that struggling Miami team a little bit later. Welcome to those of you who watch the Bucks. The Rams and the Raiders all win in dominant fashion for at least two of those teams. This is National Tight End Day, as we said, and the weather out west is really bad. You see how bad it is in Santa Clara for the 49ers and the Colts. You've been hearing George Kittle, National Tight End Day. He says it is a beautiful day for football, right? It sure is. He was born in Madison, Wisconsin, went to high school in Norman, Oklahoma, went to college in Iowa. That's what you define as a beautiful day right there. We're ready for the Niners and the Colts on Sunday night. <laughs> This is Football Night in America, served by Applebee's. Sunday Night Football! Everybody watch it! Well, the Doppler radar is messy in Santa Clara, California. Ever since Rodney's umbrella hand, we've been cursed by precipitation. I don't want to point any fingers, but there's a win factor here, too. Rod, you made your legacy in these conditions. What is the key to weathering the storm? The key is, number one, you got to make sure that your feet are properly set, meaning go from a half an inch to three quarters of an inch as far as your cleats. If you have turf, you don't have to worry about it, but out there is natural grass, so you got to make sure that you play under control and you get a little longer clean. That's a great point right there. When you think about these two teams, the run game, the defenses, who has the advantage playing in this kind of slop? Well, typically, I love playing against dome teams because they're not used to this weather. But I also like playing against West Coast um, teams because they, they're not comfortable with this weather. So if I had to pick somebody, I'm going to pick the Indianapolis Colts run game because of Jonathan Taylor and big Quentin Nelson. He's the best guard in all of football. He comes back, and that's a big addition for him. That is a huge addition. You think about Carson Wentz. He started his career in Philly. Jimmy Garoppolo, he started his career in New England. They're going to have to remember their training. Trust <laughs> those instincts tonight. Mike Tirico, back over to you. Yeah, Quentin Nelson looks like a South Bend kind of day out there for the former Notre uh -huh. Good to have him back out there. We got highlights for you. Let's go to Green Bay. By the way, welcome to Cardinals audience. Everybody's with us now. Packers are wearing 50 uniforms. Aaron Rodgers is fitting any era. Watch his play on fourth down. Just the way it's drawn up by the coach, right? Yeah, well, first of all, you can't let him scramble to his right, but who makes this kind of throw? <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Once a week, every week, 7 nothing to Devontae Adams. Well, I'll take you to the third quarter here. Packs feeling good, up 14. But Washington kept gaining yards. Taylor Heineke on the run. Good speed, good scramble. He's going to get it. 21-14. Tony's a problem. But Taylor, you have to know the rules. If you go down on your own voluntarily, they're going to mark it where you hit the ground, knee down, ball wasn't over yet. Oh, so the leap didn't count. So fourth and one, he's sneaking in, and then he fumbles, gets it back, forward progress. They say it stopped. So instead of the Lambo leap and the touchdown, no, no, 21 7. But this was the day, Tony. They outgained Green Bay by 126 yards, but in the red zone, they struggled. Really struggled, and it, it really hurt them three times down there, getting no points out of it. That was the difference in the game. Aaron threw three touchdowns, 15 on the uh, stretch, where they've won six in a row. Let's go to MetLife and the Giants looking for win two against Carolina. 5 3. Thrilling first half. Taking it to the third quarter now. Daniel Jones hands it off. Shovel. Dante Pettis. Throw it back to Jones. Quarterback. Great catch. Let's not get our quarterback beat up on that. 
Be careful, Daniel. They'll make you a wide receiver. You keep catching the ball like that. This is the way it's supposed to be. Yes. The other way around. Jones to Penn as they rule him in after a very lengthy review. Five-yard score, 12-3 Giants. Carolina really struggled in this game, and the Giants go on to a 25-3 victory. So Matt Rule's team got off to the great start early, but since then it has been a struggle. The last thing I want to do is embarrass somebody, and I know because I know that this is going to be the story this week. But you know, I really believe sometimes this is you know you go back to the old days before all the pressure. You know, you know, quarterbacks would sometimes sit for a little bit and have to come back. So we'll you know, just Sam will define who he is. You know, what I mean, like this is this is up to him. Yeah, so Sam Darnold goes back to the stadium he used to play in for the Jets and played as he did quite often with the Jets. You saw the numbers there and a little bit of the struggle. What have we seen as we've watched the defense struggle, but also the offense be not as good with Darnold's poor numbers Drew, in these last four games? Yeah, it's really been bad decisions and very costly turnovers that have put his defense in a tough spot as well. So here today... This is a great concept. You're flooding a zone with four uh, receivers, but your eyes need to be on these two deep, deep uh, defenders. He should be throwing the post here for a touchdown. Worst case is throw the check down. Instead, he tries to uh, fit the ball in there with four defenders. Costly turnover at the end of the half when they were going in to get points. But this isn't just today. This has been a theme for the last couple weeks. Here they are two weeks ago. Look, corners gaining depth. Just take the five-yard completion and get, get uh, off the goal line. Instead, he tries to force this into the hole, throws an interception, results in a Philly touchdown. It's, it's, it's plays like that, turnovers like that, that have put his defense in a tough spot, mm -hmm. but also really, you know, prevented their offense from getting anything going. Yeah, and I, I just don't know what the plan is for moving the ball without Christian McCaffrey. When Christian was in, yeah. Darnold played very well. Now it's been a struggle. It's a good point, a good reminder. The absence of McCaffrey really showing on a Panther team that doesn't have that depth. I want to bring Mike Florio in from Pro Football Talk for the first time. Mike, I was reading this week and hearing the conversation around the Panthers saying they were out of the Deshaun Watson story. Will they trade for the Houston quarterback we haven't seen this year? We showed Miami struggling a little bit as they're continuing to be involved in that. So what's the latest with the trade deadline just around the corner here? Yeah, it's nine days away, Mike, and it's coming down to two teams. Miami is considered to be the likely destination for Deshaun Watson with the Carolina Panthers as a possibility. And because he has a no trade clause in his contract, it's expected to be his call as to where he goes. He has legal issues that loom over any trade, 22 civil complaints alleging sexual misconduct during massage therapy sessions, and also 10 criminal complaints. Remember this, the criminal process has to run its course at this point, but the cases can be settled at any time. And they were close earlier this year. There was a question of whether or not the outcome would be confidential. Deshaun Watson did not want it to be confidential. He wanted it to be open. Usually the person settling wants secrecy. As to the league's position in all of this, they haven't made any decisions about whether or not Deshaun Watson would be put on paid leave because they haven't had to. The Texans have had him on paid leave. If he's traded, that's when the league would have to decide whether these legal issues require placement of him on the commissioner exempt list. Mike. One of the stories to watch, nine days till the trade deadline, 11 teams in the league, two wins or less. Maybe a lot of trade conversation coming up in the next week. Weather conversation tonight for Debo Samuel of San Francisco. It's going to be a ground game tonight with the wind and the Niners and the Colts on Sunday Night Football. Securing the win. Presented by Simply Save. Debo Samuel getting the party started. How did he catch that ball? What a run, Jonathan Taylor. That's what we talk about big plays a guy making guys miss downfield. The 49ers will win the game. What a game by Debo. Taylor has been unbelievable. That's breaking their soul. Football Night in America is brought to you by Applebee's. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. By Geico. Happy geico -ween. Switch to Geico for more ways to save. By Snickers. Rookie mistake? Maybe you just need a Snickers. And by Best Buy. He wanted to walk on the football field as the most prepared individual. The composure that he had in the pocket and his ability to lead second to none. And Carson was able to make every throw. The biggest thing I take away from his career here with NDSU, he was a winner and a highly competitive young man. Quarterback, Eastern Illinois. 
first thing everybody needs to realize is that he's always had a chip on his shoulder. He always thought he was better than what people were perceiving him to be. Jimmy Garoppolo. I always thought was that this kid was special and other people are realizing it. Yeah. Keno Babers had Jimmy Garoppolo in Eastern Illinois. There's Jimmy G, Carson Wentz, of course, Trey Lance in the mix as well. Also went to North Dakota State, the only three FCS quarterbacks to throw a pass this season. No Lance tonight with the knee injury, but all three part of those couple of teams. We'll see Wentz and Garoppolo on Sunday Night Football. And Chris Sims, we're going to see the ball in the air on a sloppy night. Yeah, all right. It's time for the points bet pulse, all right? And let's check it out. Points bet has the over under at 190 yards tonight. Man, all I know, playing quarterback, right, Drew, in this weather, it's not going to be easy. It's rain, rain, win, rain, win, everything like that. It's going to be a tough day. But let's get into Carson Wentz a little bit and what he's done lately, right? All right I've been critical, holds the ball too long, fits the ball into tight windows a little too often. But we've seen a different Carson Wentz the last few weeks. Yeah. And what I think is more than anything is sliding from pressure. Yeah, we have. Look at this. Just a subtle pocket movement here. Shoulders square, in a position to throw, delivering the ball accurately on the field. And this is what I love. This is vintage Carson, Carson Wentz. Step up into the teeth of this pressure. Deliver the ball as you're getting hit in the chin. Give your receiver an opportunity to go make a play. That is vintage Carson Wentz, and it, that, that's in the past, at times, that's led to bad decisions. Right. But what Not we've right seen now. lately is a lot of confidence, getting the ball down the field, finding his playmakers, and Courage is something he has never lacked. He'll Definitely stand in the not. pocket, and he will take the shot to deliver the ball. Looks like he's feeling really comfortable within the offense right now. They're playing well on that side. Download the Points Bet app and get betting options you don't find anywhere else. All right, Mike, back to you, man. Let's go look at Wentz's old team, Philadelphia in Vegas. Jalen Hurts was 18 of 34 passing. The star of the day as a quarterback was Derek Hart. On tight end day two, Foster Moreau. Yeah, he's Darren Waller. I've got another tight end to back shoulder, too. Coach Kittle keeps yelling, happy national tight ends day in the <laughs> Here. Josh Jacobs, this starts a stretch where they score four consecutive drives. Philly got off to a good start, but it was all Las Vegas after that. And credit to Rich Passaccia, he's done a nice job. He really, really has, he really here. has. He has solidified them, directing them very well. Back to back wins, Raiders lead the AFC West. Cincinnati, Baltimore, one of the big games in the early window today. Former Heisman winners, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow going head to head. Burrow looking deep here on tight ends day two. CJ Uzama for 55 and for six. Love the composure, Chris and Drew talk about hey, stepping away from the pressure. Yet. Joe Burrow does it here, delivers for the one-on-one. -on -one. Uzama, 91 yards, two touchdowns on NTED. National tight ends. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, a marquee spread. Hollywood, big ball here, 39 yards for the score. Beautiful throw, and this did not look like a catch, but Brown gets the knee down just before he hits out of bounds. Touchdown. Now Lamar's best passing day. Those were the last points for Baltimore since he takes over. Uzama again, 32 hey, yards to the score. National tight end yes, this Thank Baltimore you. defense really stifled Justin Herbert last week, but they did not have any answers for this crew. Oh, and that guy. Jamar Chase, the, the rookie. The guy who couldn't catch? Oh, yeah, that was August. <laughs> September and October, he can catch, and they can't catch him. 82 yards, six touchdowns this season, 201 on the day for Chase, and then doing it on the ground as well with Joe Mixon for 21 yards. The Bengals roll in the back end of this game in Baltimore. They soundly beat the Ravens by 24 points, one of the shocking results of the season. Not the win, the margin, the dominant fashion, and the numbers from these guys with Burrow and Chase going over 200 yards. A lot of attention, rightfully so, and a lot of joy for the Bengals after the game. I could not be prouder of the complete team effort that we've been waiting on all season, and you guys saved it for a road game against the Baltimore Ravens. Yep. Hats off to you guys. Who did? Who did? Who did they go beat the Bengals? Who did? Who did? Who did they go beat the Bengals? Who the old who day from the 80s coming back here for the Bengals. Tony. How do we measure quarterbacks? A lot of different stats and metrics. But in your division, second year, we see growth. And you saw a lot of that in their quarterback, Joe Burrow, today. Yeah, and I'm always harping on play the young quarterbacks. Joe Burrow last year against Baltimore struggled was confused mm -hmm. today in total control. He'd seen this stuff before and nothing fazed him today. He, he looked tremendous. Both he and Chase and all the young stars that they are starting to build atop the division. Time now to simplify the game presented by Microsoft Surface. Back to Drew and Chris.
Well, I know one thing. Drew and I have been thoroughly impressed by Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, what they've done. And one of the things when you play the Baltimore Ravens, right, is dealing with all their different defensive looks. Let's break that down, show you what the Bengals did today. Okay, they had a lot of good offensive ideas, but it starts with the quarterback and Joe Burrow. Here, you see the six-man pressure, right, Drew? They're blitzing. But Bengals got it picked up, knew who was coming, body on body, leads to an intermediate completion, and then Jamar Chase is as good as anybody in the game after the catch. Let's go to look number Number two, are they blitzing? Are they dropping? Oh, this time most of them drop. We get one guy that comes. But again, Bengals all over it. Burrow in a nice clean pocket, which is rare to say against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, the ball gets tipped, but first down. Yeah, and then here, play action. Burrow comes off his off his fake here. They've taken care of five guys here, but look, you got two free rushers. Burrow knows that, stays calm, composed, slides to that nice area of the pocket, delivers the ball down the field. You know you got one-on-one -on -one matchups. You make one guy miss, you get big plays. That was one of ten explosive plays for the Cincinnati Bengals today in a huge day for that offense. Big play at big play Bengals, Mike. Yeah, Chris, we watched a lot of Joe Burrow at LSU together. I want to bring Mike Florio back in because you think about Burrow at LSU, receivers, running backs, tight ends as well, spread the ball around the field. And C.J. Uzama, the tight end who caught two here today, Mike, he's given them that tight end element in this offense. Yeah, he's now got five on the year, and the two today were long touchdowns. And he made a guy miss before he got to the end zone. And that's important because they have a rule in Cincinnati. If the last man tackles you, you got to do 15 push-ups in front of the entire offense. And Uzama told me after the game, I do push-ups on my own time. <laughs> I'm not doing my push-ups in front of the entire offense. And there he is, avoiding 15 more. I like his attitude. I like their rule. I'm glad we don't have to deal with it here in our yeah. studio. Jonathan Taylor and the Indianapolis Colts. Another one of those teams in the AFC watching Cincinnati and others emerge. Can't let them get too far away. It is the Colts taking on the 49ers coming up. Much more ahead before Sunday Night Football. Simplify the game. Powered by Microsoft Surface. The official sideline technology provider of the NFL. Perfectly! Oh, he caught it! This is a refreshing win. Nice cut. Perfect. Gasoline in my veins. Be the fuel through my pain. Oh. What a throw! And a massive touchdown! As you rise, rise from the flames. I got a heart of a lion. Night in America, served by Applebee's. We are set for an atmospheric river in the Bay Area. Look at these fans. They don't care at all. Even the little 49ers having some fun. In the rain, that is the lingo out here for it is going to rain in California. Already raining out here. The homecoming game for DeForest Buckner as well. 49ers will pay Nick Bosa. Already paid Eric Armstead. Buckner gets his check from Indy Rod. You talk to some of his current and former teammates this week. What did, what did they tell you about him? This is the guy that all those guys have a lot of respect for. And they rant and raved about his leadership. How unselfish of a player he was. Never complaining that he got double teamed. Never complaining on third down that he gets chipped. But if you put him one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to absolutely destroy you. You see, this is a big man at 6'7", 285 pounds, beating the guard. I expect Kyle Shanahan to double team this guy. He knows how anxious he is to get back and prove something. So I, I expect Kyle Shanahan to take him away with a bunch of double teams. We do Sunday Night 7 every single week. Tonight, it's a player who's helped elevate Carson Wentz, really, and Jonathan Taylor. How many total yards and total touchdowns for Taylor? Well, he can catch that thing out of the backfield so i'm going 100 to 119 total yards i'm going one touchdown they should have success running the football behind big q quentin nelson taylor's behind only one man when it comes to total yards that is derrick henry not Ooh. bad company right there you can make your picks along with us on the nbc sports predictor app maria back over to you all right, Jack, let's get back to the highlights. The Texans on the road taking on the Cardinals, which means DeAndre Hopkins and J.J. Watt are playing their former team for the payback. first time. A little payback, right? Yes. Let, let's start with payback. Kyler Murray looking for Hopkins on this one. Yeah, great play there. Houston's defense played well early, but you're only going to contain these Arizona Cardinals for so long. Okay, remember, Zach Ertz 
He's playing in his first game as a Cardinal. How about this 47-yard touchdown? Hey, welcome to the team. Hey, Great catch there. Wide right. open 47-yard touchdown. Cardinals were rolling. Makes sense on National Titans Day to make That's that right. work. Meanwhile, the Cardinals still undefeated. That tied uh, their best start in franchise history. Let's do a little switch and swapping out quarterbacks. Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford playing for their brand new teams and playing each other for the first time. Detroit, they're, they're winless, so they brought the entire kitchen sink with them on special They teams. did. They were doing everything early on. Two fake punts, an onside kick. Dan Campbell was going to give his team a chance to compete in this one, and that's what he did. Yeah, and ultimately it worked because the Rams trailed 19 to 17 uh, until they started to get that offense going. Oh, guess obviously. what? Cooper guess Cup. what? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. I mean, it's every week. It's unbelievable right now. Stafford to Cup. Cup, another touchdown. I mean, it's unreal the way they find ways to get him the ball week after week. Easy touchdown right there for Cooper Cup. After the two point conversion, the Rams lead at 25 to 19, and then Jared Goff. Check him out. He's going to get intercepted here by Jalen Ramsey. It's his 27th birthday, so that's great for the cornerback to get a pick. Uh, but I want you to check this out. On the play, right. Goff is hit by Aaron Darnold. Oh, the old, old teammate. teammate. Yep, the old <laughs> teammate. And just, you know, it's tough. You're under pressure there. It wasn't open downfield. He's trying to make a play. Jalen Ramsey, of course, makes the phenomenal interception. And there go the two quarterbacks, the number one overall picks that were swapped. They switched teams. Jared Goff still hasn't got a win without that head coach, Sean McVay. Uh, but meanwhile, let's do a little QB comparison. Taking a look, one passing touchdown and two interceptions for Goff. Three touchdowns for Matthew Stafford and over 300 yards passing. Didn't run the ball real well today, the Rams, but that's why they got Matthew Stafford, because when they can't run the ball, he does a lot of great things. And the Rams, I think in general, they're kind of the forgotten team. Six and one, they played two bad quarters against the Arizona Cardinals. And for me, I don't know how you guys feel at the desk, but I, I think they're one of the best teams in football, no doubt about it. Yeah, definitely one of their best starts since 2018. Remember, that's when they went to the Super Bowl, and obviously we're not going to forget about them. It's just that the Cardinals are sitting there know, undefeated right there, in the them. NFC West, so maybe that's what it is. Mike? Yeah, good, good points there. And you saw on that graphic the numbers that's why they traded for Stafford mm -hmm. he made three throws over 20 yards Goff doesn't he was 0 for one throw in at 20 or more and in the big spot Stafford made the play Goff didn't but this Detroit team is like the Baltimore game with the record setting field goal <laughs> Minnesota the last play of the game go out to LA and play they're the one winless team but they keep playing some decent games here Drew they're battling and they're battling against some really good teams and Dan Campbell has them ready to play and Coming into this game, you knew they were going to pull out all the stops. They, they steal three possessions, yeah. two fake punts, the onside kick, and had the lead going in in the fourth quarter. They just didn't have enough there at the end with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, but they fought. And Drew, you played in a lot of games like this in New Orleans. I had games like this with Peyton Manning. You're heavy favorites. The other team is doing everything they can. And you're not playing quite your best, but your stars have to come through. And that's what happened today. Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Matthew Stafford, when they needed it in the fourth quarter. And Chris mentioned it. The Rams are one of five teams. You see what they're doing in the NFC West with Arizona. Arizona, the Rams, you've got Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Dallas, all teams with one loss or no losses in the NFC. Five teams are in that inside that velvet rope. VIP teams. <laughs> That's a strong right. group. Yeah. yeah, as we get to the middle point of the season. It's nice, it's dry, it's comfortable, it's pleasant here. We are not in Santa Clara. It is going to be a rain game and a wind game. It's been very difficult out in the Bay Area. The folks trying to get to the stadium as well. Kyle Shanahan and company in the rain. Ground-based tonight. Niners, Colts, coming up. Welcome to the Hyundai Sunday Night Kickoff. We do hope the folks on the West Coast, Northern California, stay in state. It is a brutal weather that is coming through. It's in the meteorological talk, a bomb cyclone. <laughs> what it means to us is it's yucky out. Wind, rain, factor expected throughout the game tonight. Who knows what kind of game we'll see between the Colts and the 49ers at Levi's on Sunday Night Football. Let's go on the field presented by Hyundai. So a lot on the quarterbacks protecting the ball. That's a, what about Jimmy Garoppolo back in the lineup tonight, Drew Brees? Yeah, Jimmy G's back after missing a few weeks here with that calf. We'll see how healthy he is and, and obviously the uh, weather conditions, how that might affect his ability to throw the football. And on the other side, Tony Carson Wentz for the Eagles, yeah. for the Colts, the former right. Eagles. He missed a lot of training camp just now getting that 
chemistry with his receivers. He has played great the last three weeks. Uh, looking for him to have a big game tonight. All right, so about 25 minutes away, Sunday Night Football, the Colts and the 49ers. Let's get you the last couple of highlights from this Sunday number seven. Chicago and Tampa Bay. Tom Brady's 44. He's been in the league 22 years. Justin Fields has been with us 22 years. <laughs> Early on, 14 nothing Bucks. Bears gave them good short fields. There is the drive. Touchdown. Tom Brady, number 600. It goes to Mike Evans. Mike Evans, congratulations. Hey, I'm going to give the ball to a fan just to know the touchdown. Fans got the ball. Wait a minute. Where's the ball for the record for Brady? What? For the that, was, that was 600? I didn't know that. I gave the ball. <laughs> so they negotiate. We'll give you a Brady jersey and Evans jersey. We'll give you Tony Dungy's old coaching whistle. Anything we have here in Tampa, we'll give to you. Give us the ball back. They got it back. Brady got the ball back often and made him pay. Evans one more time. A lot of single coverage today. Chicago trying to stop the run, and Evans was outstanding. National Tight Ends Day. There's no Gronk. It's like not having right. Santa on Christmas. <laughs> but Mike Evans in the red zone is replacing Gronk's impact, isn't it? Yeah, that's okay. That's 601, Mike. You give that <laughs> ball away. That's that's fine. <laughs> It'll do it one more time down here in the red zone again, right? Yeah, he's a, a beast down there. Just a big target, big catch radius, and Tom knows who to go to in the red zone. And this was so cool. End of the game. This young man had a sign. Said, Tom Brady helped me beat brain cancer. Tom saw it before the game ended, walked over, gave the young man a hat, and he was in tears. Just a great touching moment there as part of the Buccaneers blowout win over the Bears. Kansas City, Tennessee, one of the games of the day. Derrick Henry, terrific Monday night game. What's he going to do? He's going to run the ball in. No, no, no. It looks like a little Tim Tebow pass. Oh, no. Oh, okay, suck them all in. Huh? Michael Pruitt on National yeah. Tight Ends Day. Yeah, everybody attacking the line of scrimmage. <laughs> this Tight Ends Day thing is preposterous. Jimmy Garoppolo's creation, but we're having fun with it. 7 out of Tennessee. It's Henry's second career touchdown pass. And Tannehill getting A.J. Brown continually more involved here. And Kansas City had to make an effort to stop Derrick Henry. A lot of single coverage on the outside. A.J. Brown had a huge day. We needed a second look at this. They went from incomplete to catch. Kept the drive alive. Five up seven nothing. Five plays later. Let's do it again. Tannehill and Brown for 24 yards. Again, single coverage. Take advantage of your matchup. Eight catches. 133 for Brown. And the Titans offense was rolling. So the Chiefs are in a hole, but Mahomes can score, right? They can score right away. Looking for Josh Gordon here. Tony, frustration, impatience, and some struggles here for this offense now. As Rodney said, Tennessee did a really good job matching up with those receivers, but when things weren't there, Patrick Mahomes forcing balls. We've seen this week in, week out. Now. Six straight games with a pick. He had six all of last year. Nine this year. Tennessee got the ball back. It's Tannehill. He's going to run it in for a couple. That was easy. And the influence of Derrick Henry, yes. too, right? Yes, sir. You're looking for him. You're looking for him. I want to dig deeper here on Mahomes and the pressure. He's going to take a hit as they were trying somehow just to get something on the board here. Tennessee pass rush was really good. Protection wasn't great, but again, Patrick Mahomes trying to make things happen in tough situations. Looked bad here. It did clear concussion protocol. Chiefs held out of the end zone today. It's been uh, kind of uh, rainbows and flowers and awesome for these last few years, but uh, whenever you want to build something substantial and you want to build something great, it, you're going to go through parts like this. And um, I mean, it's still, people keep saying it's still early in the year. I mean, we're, we're still we can still go get whatever we want, um, but it's going to take us getting better every single day. Um, because if you get better every single day and play each game play by play, uh, I think we have the talent in this locker room that we can we can make it happen. More on the three and four AFC champs with our Sunday night game flow presented by Progressive. Maria. All right, Mike, we all know that Derrick Henry averages at least 100 yards rushing per game. So by his standards, having only 86 here today is low, but you said he still had an incredible impact on his offense. Definitely. The, the Derrick Henry effect. You heard Coach Dungy and the guys talking about it a little. Let's break it down and see what he did. Because, yeah, he might have not had the huge day like you talked about, Maria, but what he does is creates a huge day for everybody else. Look at all the Kansas City Chiefs defenders up at the line of scrimmage worried about the Derrick Henry run game. Oh, again, what is it? Play action pass. Again, eight guys at the line of scrimmage worried about stopping the run. Ryan Tannehill, beautiful deep ball down the left sideline uh, to A.J. Brown. Then, we saw this a few minutes ago. Look at this. Look, everybody's running left with Derrick Henry. I mean, I think I still could have scored on this one. I'm pretty sure. Untouched. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. No chance. But that's a Derrick Henry effect. <laughs> and that was the Sunday Night Game Flow presented by Progressive. Um, meanwhile, how about Derrick Henry? He has 10-plus rushing touchdowns. He also has a passing touchdown through the first seven games. Only one other player has done that in the Super Bowl era. It's who? LaDainian Tomlinson? You get a gold star. Uh, yeah, I thought I was going to get him. All right. Okay. Got a touchdown okay. for Chris. I'm smart. Let's go to the Mike Real Florio smart. effect. Florio, what do you have for us? 
Well, you know, I talked to quarterback Ryan Tannehill after the game, and we saw the touchdown pass from Derrick Henry. And on that play, Ryan Tannehill, a former receiver at Texas A&M, was wide open. Watch this, wide open. Now, he said he wasn't the primary target, but he hopes they'll use it again, and he'll maybe get a chance to have a receiving touchdown. He had 10 in college. He has one in 10 seasons in the NFL. He may be looking for number two from Derrick Henry at some point. Mike? Return the favor for sure, Mike. Let's take a big picture step back here in the AFC. We're not the halfway point, but we've seen a lot here, guys. We've seen Kansas City beat Buffalo, then Tennessee beat Buffalo and Kansas City back-to-back -back in this round. Robin of three of the four division champs. Pittsburgh being the other one from the AFC last year. Kansas City's defense is bad. Pro Football Focus tells us they're allowing seven yards of play in the first half. Two of every five drives is ending up in a touchdown. So the defense is an issue, but you're looking at the offense. Yeah, Kansas City went to two straight Super Bowls with not great defense. To me, the offense, that, that's where I see the problems. Lack of fundamentals, turning the ball over, penalties, pass protection, uh, just undisciplined play, Drew, and, and we're not used to seeing this from the Chiefs. No, and, and they have been, and they haven't gotten it fixed yet, but, but how about Tennessee's offense? I think they've found a formula for winning. Obviously, being able to feed Derrick Henry the ball, what that does to open up opportunities in the passing game, they're taking advantage of those, and defensively, something they lacked last year was a pass rush. They have that pass rush now this year, and they're in games where they've been taking the lead because of their offensive play, and it's been allowing that pass rush to tune up. I'm fascinated by the AFC. Cincinnati's five and two. The Raiders with their turmoil five and two. Baltimore still five and two, even though they lost. Don't forget the Chargers who are on a bye. For, so a lot of good teams here. But you made a point about Buffalo. They might be like a pair of shoes away from <laughs> beating Tennessee on Monday night, right? They are. They're a quarterback sneak and a, and a good pair of seven stud shoes away from <laughs> converting that and then going and scoring and win that game. So I, I still think Buffalo is the most complete team. I still think they're playing the best. Tennessee certainly made a strong case for the last two weeks, but my, my bet is still on Buffalo at this yeah, point. But every AFC team, about the time we're ready to crown them, as Denny Green would yeah. say, something happens, you know, and Tennessee's <laughs> playing great, but they lost to the Jets. How, how does that happen? Point. That's a good point. And if you're a team like the Colts that had big hopes this year, it's a reminder, you better get tonight because there are so so many good teams in the AFC, you cannot afford to be sitting in a big hole. They will try to do it tonight in the weather in Santa Clara. It's going to be an interesting night to watch. Maybe a defensive night. Maybe a Nick Bosa 49er kind of night. Or for the Colts, Darius Leonard. Two of the best on the defensive side of the ball. We'll see them coming up on Sunday Night Football. So this a night that after pregame warm-ups, you go find something dry. Yes, change clothes again. For everybody, too. And then you come back out and get wet. <laughs> Seven minutes till kickoff of Sunday Night Football, 49ers and Colts. Your rainy night in Santa Clara, but first, the best of Week 7, brought to you by Verizon, the official 5G network. Of the NFL, it's National Tight Ends Day, so let's do it with a tight end theme. Yeah, Rogers through three. How can I find a tight end? Robert Tundin. <laughs> The Green Bay has won six or they play Arizona. Big game Thursday night. Kansas City, Tennessee, Drew, Derrick Henry. Found yeah. a tight end. Uh, they thought they had to put their big boy pads on to defend the run. They didn't <laughs> know that big guy could throw. Michael Pruitt with the touchdown catch. Carolina, the Jets, a bunch of trick plays around the yeah. league today. Not a tight end here, but trick play day, maybe. Dan <laughs> Jones on the receiving end. Giants handing the Panthers their fourth straight loss. Darnold pulled in this game. Meantime, the Jets in New England. Richard Seymour went in the Patriots Hall of Fame. Said he wanted to have it on a Jets home game. Because that's their home <laughs> game. Oh, that's yeah. low. Yeah, well, you see, so are the Jets. They continue to struggle against the Patriots. Detroit and L.A. The return game of the quarterbacks with Stafford and Goff Cooper Cup. Yeah, I know it's tight end day, but you might want to double Cooper Cup in the red zone. Late Drew? Yeah. Detroit had stole three possessions on special teams plays today, but it wasn't quite enough there at the end. Forced them to turn over. Great job by the Rams defense. They remain the only winless team in the league. The Raiders won back-to-back -back games to top the AFC West. No Darren Waller, but still get it to a tight end. Foster Moreau with the touchdown grab there. 2-0 under Rich Bisaccia, the interim coach. For Tampa, it was a record-setting day again for Tom Brady. Yeah, Mike, when you're down in the right, uh, red zone, Mike Evans is your target. What a stud. Career touchdown pass number 600 for Brady. The Bucks are 6-1. and one. Tony, Zach Ertz, welcome to Arizona. Yes, I've only been here a week, but I kind of like these open spaces. A lot of wide receivers the double cover. I can run free. 47 yards on the touchdown there. Cardinals remain the NFL's only undefeated team. We mentioned their game against Green Bay. One of the wins of the day, Cincinnati in Baltimore. Go routes, back shoulders, <laughs> slants on third and two that go for 80. 
This guy, Jamar Chase, can do a little bit of everything. Everybody chase and chase again. Eight receptions, 201 yards. Bengals tied atop the AFC North with the Ravens at 5-2 and two as you watch the best of Week 7, brought to you by Verizon. Believe in the Bengals? I do, and, and we talk about whether quarterbacks should play right away. Joe Burrow played right away, took some lumps last year, didn't look great against Baltimore last year, but man, this year, under control, handle those blitzes. Uh, they look like a really, really good football team today. They did, and uh, Tennessee did as well. These last two victories for them, last seven days, they beat Buffalo, they beat Kansas City, the two teams that were in the AFC Championship last year. I think they have the formula now. They're running the ball well, they're making big plays in the passing game as a result of that run game, and defensively they've been getting after opposing quarterbacks. And the flip side of that, you merged with a headline today of Kansas City's got some work to do here, not just in their division, but in the conference as well. Time now for the home team picks brought to you by Lowe's out to Soggy Santa Clara. Jack, get us going here. Oh, Mike, it is soggy, that's for sure. 57% of the country is on the 49ers in this weather. San Francisco hasn't won a game in over a month. Indy just picked up wins over Miami and Houston for what it's worth. I gotta go with the more desperate team. I'm taking the 49ers, although I've gone back and forth a hundred times. I guess I'm going with the 49ers as well, and um, I just, you look at Indianapolis, they have two starters in the secondary, yeah. not playing a starting corner and a starting safety, I'm going with 49ers. Mike Florio, who are you picking? Well, you know, 49ers fans think I hate the 49ers. Officially, I don't. I'm still picking the Colts. <laughs> Running game tonight, Jonathan Taylor, Quentin Nelson's back, Chris, Maria. All right, I'm going with Florio and Jonathan Taylor. The Colts. I'm going to go with a team that's better at running the football, and I think that's the 49ers, especially with this bad weather. Uh, 49ers and a, col a close one. All right, Mike. I will go Colts. Gentlemen? Well, I am going to go 49ers only because it's going to be a muddy track, bad weather day, windy. Colts would, can make a lot of big plays, but I don't know that the weather's going to allow that. I feel like the pressure's on me. I'm the tiebreaker now. It, it, I'm, oh, going, go I'm going Colts. I'm going Colts. I, I, like, I think they're just playing better. I think they're playing better right now. Interesting, pro football focus, you look at the playoff probability numbers, the team that wins, their playoff probability doubles. If they lose tonight, the Colts about a 1 in 5 shot to make the playoffs, the Niners about a 1 in 7 shot to make the playoffs. So, important Huge game tonight game. for game. these teams. Those were tonight's hometown picks brought to you by Lowe's. So we are set for kickoff out west between the 49ers and the Colts, as we said. Hugely important game, and the conditions just add to it. Now Chris and Michelle have the call for you, and of course Carrie Underwood gets us started. We will see you at halftime, and as always, enjoy the game. This has been the Hyundai Sunday Night Kickoff. Spanish language audio provided by Telemundo Deportes, or watch tonight's game in Spanish on Universo.